Wait, 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 bro. Are you... <laughs> oh my god, this guy's animating in motion editor. Yo, everyone, look at this guy. He's literally animating in motion editor. Hey, hey, bro, let me just walk over here real quick. All right, so it's called motion editor for a reason. It's good for editing motion, but absolutely not for creating it. You're giving yourself significantly more work, and that's inevitably going to lead to significantly more mistakes. Take it from me, someone who used to animate an exclusively motion editor. Instead, you're going to want to use graph editor. Today, we're going to talk about how to animate with it. If you already use it, stick around because you might learn a few new things. We're going to be covering all of these buttons and their functionality. So firstly, Graph Editor is this tab on the right side. Once you select that, you can cycle between Clip Editor and Graph Editor with the Tab key. Now the M key will place something called a keyframe. Think of this keyframe as your character's pose on that specific frame. This can be applied to any individual bone. What I advise is that you select your character in your outliner, and then place a keyframe at the start of your animation. Now whenever you move anything, SFM will auto-place a keyframe at whatever frame you're on. The further apart your frames are, the slower the timing of the animation will be. You'll notice that when you move things, you see these lines show up. Those lines represent movement. The steeper the lines are, the more fast moving the animation generally is. Alright, so the buttons. Firstly, the select button here. When you click and drag on the graph, you can select these dots. The hotkey is Q. Next is the move button. This lets you move points around the graph. You can alter poses this way. The hotkey for the move button is middle mouse button. This is the pan button. It lets you pan around your graph in case some of your points are off screen. The hotkey for pan is alt middle mouse button. Then there's the scale button. It will essentially bring all selected points toward or away from the selected Y axis value. Basically the numbers you see here on the far left side of the screen. If you click near zero and drag down, it'll scale the intensity of the animation down. And if you drag up, it'll increase the intensity of the animation. And the hotkey for scale is control right mouse. Lastly is zoom. Self-explanatory. It, it adjusts the zoom of the graph. It's good for looking at the curves of smaller movements. The hotkey for zoom is alt right mouse. On to the juicy parts. This is essential you will be using these three tangent options. Linear, spline, and step tangents. The way I prefer to use this feature is by selecting keyframes and clicking on the tangent type that I want to use. This will affect all white tangents. Linear is self-explanatory. It turns your animation into a flat point A to point B line. This is great if you want to get rid of overshoot from spline keys, which are SFM's default. Speaking of which, spline tangents are awesome. They give you smooth, organic transitions between poses, blending your tangents together. You'll be using these like 90% of the time. Lastly is stepped. These basically cause abrupt, instantaneous changes. This is perfect for jump cuts and cameras and for animating in pose to pose, also known as blocking. You can choose what types of tangents SFM uses by default when placing new keyframes by selecting them in this drop down menu right here. Don't, don't ask me what all the others do, I, I don't know and I don't care. I've got over 15,000 hours clocked on SFM and I've never once used any of the other choices. Now let's talk about the slightly more advanced stuff. You may be wondering what these three buttons are. These are toggleable buttons, so make sure that when you're done using them you turn them back off. By default you should have the middle option selected. I've looked all over and I have absolutely no idea what this option does. I've never disabled it in, in my life and I've had zero problems, so I personally recommend just not touching it. To the right you'll see normalize curve display. This makes it so that all the curves in your graph fit on screen, I think. To the left is offset. This is an interesting one. It allows you to place keyframes over existing animation without actually blending the two together. Think of it as additive animation. This is great for adding in new animation without getting rid of the animation you already have in place. We're gonna take it back to select mode real quick. When selecting a keyframe, if you're particularly keen-eyed, you might have noticed these pale magenta colored lines with boxes at the end of them. These are tangents basically where a line touches but doesn't intersect a curve at a given point. 
I, I just call them handles for simplicity. In select mode, you, you can drag over the box of the handle to select it and then move it up and down with the move tool. This will adjust the curve of your animation between your two keyframes. That will change the timing of your animation. This is very useful for tweaking movements. Just keep in mind that whenever you select new tangents, it'll automatically reset any changes you've made. Well, that's the gist of it. That's everything you need to know about graphs. Be sure to share this video around. I, I want my content to spread like the Rona. Like this video if it helped you, and leave a comment if you made it this far. If, if you're new around here and you want to see more SFM content in your feed, drop a, subs drop a subscribe and turn on notifications, please. I, it's not it, it's not like I'll be blowing up your notifications or anything. And if you want updates on video progress, the occasional polls on future content, and notifications on when next videos will be dropping, my Discord is in the description. Thanks for watching. I've been CGI Joe, and until next time, keep it classy.